presentation is the fifth of ten, and we are praying these next weeks with Kevin O'Brien's book, The Ignatian Adventure, pages 143 to 161. Remember this, I'm not giving a retreat, I'm helping you make yours. So if, if you are still praying with the ideas and the prayers from the last weeks, stay there. Turn this off and go back. When you are ready, you will know it. Okay. We are in the beginning years of Jesus' life. And you say, well, what's there for me in praying with those events? Annunciation, visitation, nativity, presentation, finding in the temple, hidden life, and even the flight into Egypt. There is the plain text, yes, but even at these early years, we encounter a very important reality, that Jesus was human. And there have been many conflicts of theology and heresies about well, Jesus was just pretended he was human, or he was divine sometimes and human sometimes, or he was adopted by God. No, this is a mystery, and we don't, we don't understand it. But the church has taught consistently that Jesus was totally human and totally divine. I don't know. But there's something in there for us because it's how we meet him. He says, I come to meet you in your humanity. Don't run away from your humanity. So we're praying here these next weeks and probably for a long time with the humanity of Jesus who knew us, experienced everything we experience. We believe that and we are comforted by that. But one maxim to begin and a very important one. I will say it, you might want to write it down or read it. Actions flow from attitude and attitudes are formed by how we answer questions. I will unpack that. You will know people who you, you would say are reckless or are gentle, their attitude is gentle. How did they get that attitude? And their actions are that way. They're reckless if they have a reckless attitude. Why would a person have a reckless attitude? It's, I think it's because of how they answer questions about themselves and about reality. So if you, if you have a, a question, what is this? You say, this is a wonderful gift. That forms your attitude, your spirit, towards it, how you will act with it. If it's just a, a nothing, a throwaway, it, it will be reflected in your actions. But the questions rise from our human experience, as they did with Ignatius, as they did with all of us. So the question is, what is this? Who am I? And that's what we pray about with Jesus who is human. To not pretend that I am not human, that I am not an angel. Is a good tree a good tree because it bears good fruit? Or does it bear good fruit because it is a good tree? It is a good tree. Is this a good tree? Is this a good person? How do you answer that? How you answer that will be reflected in your attitude towards yourself and what you do. And Ignatius answered the questions and we've prayed with it these past weeks, that we are created by God out of love for love. That's the answer. Now we don't always live according to our answers. 
but we are oriented by the exercises and by our prayer and by the teachings of Jesus that there is a goodness here and there is a goodness there. Who are you? What is that? They are all gifts. They all have the fingerprints of God. And so it, it does resonate. It does get reflected in what I do. My actions will reflect in a, in a way how I ask the questions and how I live with the answers. Very important maxim. Actions flow from attitude. Attitude are a result of how I answer questions. So what is in the first parts of the second week of the exercises? Well, it's Jesus who was born, for instance, as a human being of a woman in poverty, in neglect, not celebrated. What's in that for me? I don't know what's in it for you. What's in being persecuted? Jesus was persecuted in his very early years by King Herod and they f fled into Egypt. And he lived obediently, simply. And he went to the temple in obedience to the law of God. He was obedient. He, he fulfilled the first commandment and the second commandment and all the commandments. He was obedient, honoring his mother and his father by going down and was obedient to them according to the law. So there's a lot there, linger there with what you pray with in Luke 1, 2, especially 2. So we're praying with the early years, the important years, and then one that I really, really ask, spend a lot of time, and it's not in scripture, but it is a very important scene in the life of Jesus in the exercises. And it's this, imagine this, it's not in the, in the scriptures, not in Luke who carefully watched the events of Jesus' early life. Ignatius says, spend a lot of time with Jesus leaving home. It's in the text of the exercises, but it's not in scripture. Why? It's a good question. But for Ignatius, it was very important because he was oriented towards leaving what was behind him, his family, his status, his wild life, how people knew him, their name for him, their attitude towards him, the answers they had for who is Inigo de Loyola? Oh, he's a wild man, a womanizer, drunkard, military power, status. What do we have to leave false identities behind? What was our home? What has been our home? What has been our place of comfort or our place of shame and hiding? That's our home. To leave our home. To leave that which defined us and let Jesus define us. Let Jesus be the answer to who am I? You see, there's a lot there for us. And then he goes to, to the baptism and, and you will pray with that. And what's in, what's in there for you? That you were baptized? No. But you are asked to listen to what he listened to. He as a human being listened to what the Father had said about him, what the Father says about us in him. And, and then right after in Matthew 3, at the end of Matthew 3, the beginning of 4, he is tempted as a human being to power and esteem, prestige, possessions. Tempted as a human being. So are we. We will see that again. So there's much in these weeks coming, much honesty, but not negativity. Honesty is not necessarily negative. It's grace because he can meet us there. And then he met all kinds of people when they were honest about their condition. He couldn't meet the Pharisees because they 
were not honest about who they were. They, they, they told their truth, the truth that the community gave them, but not the truth that God gave them. And in the exercises we are asked to be freed by God's image of us. And of course we have to maybe leave, a part of leaving home is leave what used to be a customary, our image of God. God is a demanding God, God is punishing. God wants to be worshiped as distant. And the exercises are to be exercised from a false image of God according to the commandments. And during this, these weeks coming, you will be asked to consider a thing called discernment, the voice of God. Uh, maybe you have learned uh, footprints, the way people walk, you, you know who's coming because of the way they clop or slide or shuffle. Ignatius has this thing about discernment, learning that we are moved by good spirits and bad ones. Just a word, because I want you to pray with what O'Brien gives you. Consolation is about being in the sunshine, soul, la sole. It's about being in the light, where you see the light and you see things because of the light. De sole is being in the shadow, being in dark. And the evil spirit loves de sole. The evil spirit, this, this is really two big things here. The evil spirit will always tempt something that's very good in us, okay? Always gonna tempt something good because the good will reveal the goodness of God. Let's have no revelation of the goodness of God. Let me tempt you about something that's good in two ways. And you watch this in your own life and in the, making the, your prayer these next weeks. The evil spirit wants to get us into dark by making noise. Ignatius talks about the evil one, it's, you'll know it, it's like water falling on a rock. It splashes and it's noisy. And he says, the evil spirit will always want us to either do nothing, not to do bad, but not do the good that you are. Don't bear good fruit. Don't do the good things. Be, why? Because you, you are not good enough. So don't do a good thing because of negativity, inferiority, bad image, bad voices, desolation. Uh, looking to the earth, Ignatius would say, looking to the earth for comfort. And the earth can't give us comfort. The other way the evil one says is, yes, do, all, do that, do what you're good at, do it so much that you'll burn out. Uh, pile up a lot of bricks on your cart so that the axle breaks. Either way, it gets you in neutral. It gets you in non-revelational self-pity. So we have to pray, that's the evil one will always try to do us and, and the, the goodness of God is keep going. Yes, you aren't perfect. You don't have to do it all, but but continue doing the good that you are. And then the last part of these weeks in your book is the call of the king. And he has a, a great image of uh, a king calling followers and saying, and you, you will pray with it and read it. It's that, it's that call, come follow me. I will be with you. And my intent is to conquer the whole world. We can do it. 
You and I can do it. Oh, you think you're going to do it alone. No, you're not going to do it alone. I will be with you. So that's at the very beginning. It's the call in the beginning of Jesus' public life in Luke 5. It's come follow me. Peter says, no, I'm not good enough. I'm a sinful man. Jesus says, well, you're right. But I still call you. And you will even encounter even more of how you fall to the evil spirit. So the call of the king becomes a very important orientation. So, so take your time with, with that consideration. It's, it's not so much a contemplation or a meditation. Ignatius calls it a consideration. It's an orientation. In a way, it's, you can see it in, in the prayer, um, the, the oblation prayer, the offering. You can see a, a, a summary of the first principle and foundation way back at the beginning. And you might want to go back there, that we were created to praise, reverence, and serve God. But I uh, have a, a little part here from Shakespeare. And it's in uh, Henry V, chapter four, act, uh, no, uh, act four, scene three. And it's King Henry V at the Battle of Agincourt, where his outnumbered English troops are going to fight the French. And he's saying, we're few, but we're together. And you will someday be very happy. You will, you will be able to roll up your sleeve and show your scars that trumpet the fact that you were part of a victory at Agincourt. And this is, this is the orienting speech that he gives. This story shall the good man teach his son. And Crispin, it was on the battle, the battle was on the, the feast of St. Crispin. And Crispin, Crispian, shall ne'er go by, the feast will never go by, from this day to the ends of the world. But we, in it, shall be remembered we few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. No matter how bad he was, but that he was here with us, that will make him a hero. And gentlemen in England now abed. Now those people, men in England who are in bed, shall think themselves accursed. They were not here and hold their manhoods cheap. While away sleeps those that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. It's a challenging speech by Shakespeare, by Henry V. How could I, how could I not want to be here? And Ignatius said, anybody of his right mind, it's a pretty strong statement, anybody of his right mind would want to be here with us this day, this Crispin day. So there's a lot to pray with watching Jesus. One more uh, maxim, and I've said it before, but it's very important. Intimacy cannot be standardized. That is, we're never going to know how we're doing. It's not a good question to ask. Am I doing it the right way? Am I making the exercises the way 
Gillick would do it, or O'Brien would do it, or anybody would do it, or Ignatius would do it. No, Ignatius says this is an instrument for freedom from such things. It's not to be judged and assessed. Intimacy cannot be standardized. Love relationships, marriages, friendships. Are we doing it right? If we're doing it, we're doing it right. So trust the way you are doing. Don't call up somebody else and say, uh, what grade did you give yourself there? No, no grades. How free are you becoming? How much goodness has been unloosed, freed for distribution, for ministry. This poem by Tagore sums up the following of Jesus. Here is thy footstool, and there rest thy feet, where live the poorest, and the lowliest, and the lost. When I try, down, try to bow down to thee, my obeisance cannot reach down to the depth where thy feet rest, among the poorest, and the lowliest, and the lost. Pride can never approach to where thou walkest in the clothes of the humble among the poorest and the lowliest and the lost. My heart can never find its way to where thou keepest company with the companionless among the poorest the lowliest and the lost. 